Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to part 3 of the FF class Power Mac G4 Cube. So, as usual, if you haven't seen part 1 or part 2 yet, I highly, highly recommend you go check them out. Annotations are on screen now and links in the description down below as always. Um, so part 1 was parts overview, we went over everything that's going to make up this cube. Part 2 was the build process, we turned the cube into an FF class cube. And now this is part three. We're gonna sort of go over, summarize, and see if this cube was really worth all of the effort. Um, we're gonna play a couple of games, we're gonna play a few videos, we're just gonna sort of see how quick it is um, in sort of day to day normal tasks. And before you sort of like go comparing it to like a, a quad G5 or something, bear in mind that this is still a single processor. 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4. So I was sort of looking at machines that we could compare it to and I would be really really happy if it could sort of punch above its weight, get on par or possibly outdo um, a 2003 single processor 1.25 uh, Power Mac G4 MDD. That would be awesome. That is a machine that is much 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 louder than this cube. It's four times the size and I believe it's three years younger than that cube. So it would be awesome if that cube could sort of just give that MDD a run for its money. Um, if we can do that, then I'll, I'll be happy. And just before we begin, um, if you wanna see some super high resolution glam shots of the FF class cube, then I'm gonna leave a uh, Flickr or Imager link in the description down below. Um, so you can sort of just get up close and personal with the cube and properly properly see just how beautifully designed these things are. So with that said, let's delve right in. So um, before we start anything, just want to sort of go over the spec, show that everything is legit working. You see there 10.5.8, all the updates are installed nicely. Uh, 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4, 2 megs of L3 cache, that is awesome. 1.5 gigs of SE RAM, more info, uh, good graphics, you can see there G4 6200, core image, Supported, Quartz Extreme supported. This is a little beast of a system, guys. And uh, the first test we're going to do, we're going to do with synthetic benchmarks first, just to see how it, how it stacks up to other machines, like sort of just purely crunching numbers. Uh, this is Geekbench. Everyone knows about Geekbench. So um, yeah, for comparison again, I said about the MDD, the 1.25 MDD. That bench is around about 700 on average in Geekbench 2, 32 bit. So I'm gonna let this run now and um, yeah, I'll get back to you when it's complete. 10 minutes later then guys, bloody hell that took forever. <laughs> and we have a score of 678. Now that is not bad at all. Um, I said I wanted to get somewhere around 700, that's where we got. Um, that MDD of, that we're comparing ourselves to now as well has uh, DDR memory. This cube only has PC100 memory, and of course Geekbench tests the CPU and the RAM. So you can see the integer performance around 900, floating point around 750, and then the memory brings it down um, with a score of 380 and 179. So that's a really, really very, very decent score. And we have nearly tripled the speed of our cube simply just with the CPU upgrade. This machine in a stock configuration scores around 200 250 so that that sort of a score coming out one of these systems you don't see that every day so the next thing we're going to test now is uh, the hard drive so here we are then Xbench let's just open that up you can you can use it for um like your CPU and GPU and stuff but we're just going to use it for the disk today now I pulled in the scores that I got when I upgraded, if you remember back last year, or the year before now, when I upgraded my PowerBook G4 with an SSD. So we can sort of conclude now whether it was worth getting an SSD or not. Now that PowerBook had a Kingspec 32GB SSD in it, and it was running off ATA100. This cube, running off ATA66, and of course it's got the 120GB um, Caviar SE drive in it. So there we go then. Um, we've scored 47.61. Um, now for comparison, the PowerBook with the SSD in it got 49.55. So that is a very, very small difference. 
Now, sequential, 83.23. The PowerBook got 57.44. So, sequential, the hard drive is actually quicker. Random, as you'd expect, the SSD is quicker. This got 33.34. The SSD got 43.56, but there's not that much in it at all. Now, if you look at the sort of specific little tests, then basically anything that involves writing, the hard drive is quicker, much, much quicker than the SSD. Um, it's the, the uncached reads, that's where the SSD really makes its gains. So, uh, it's pretty much what I expected, to be honest, but there's not a massive amount in it, honestly. And that sort of confirms that, yeah, a hard drive was probably the right choice. And if we go up here, you can see there, just about, it, the, the hard drive now is running at 41 degrees Celsius. That's not bad for a system which is an 8 inch cube. So, temperatures are okay, speeds aren't that far behind what I get in an SSD anyway, so that pretty much puts it to bed, guys. A hard drive was probably uh, the best choice to go with. Now, a benchmark for the GPU then. Now, uh, this is OpenMark, pretty much the, the standard in PowerPC land for GPU benchmarks. And I have a couple of um, scores that uh, are lined up here so we can compare how well it does, but I'm just gonna let this run. Um, it's gonna take a while and I'll get back to you when it's all finished up. And there we go, we've got a score then, 5,018. And bear in mind, guys, this is running at 2560 by 1080. This 15-year-old G4 cube is pushing 2.7 million pixels. It just blows my This computer just blows my mind so much. Um, the original Rage 128 Pro that came with this system 15 years ago, that scores 250. That is just ridiculous. 250 to over 5,000. Um, the GeForce 4 Titanium, um, same card that I put in my MDD last year, that bench is around 4,500, so it's even faster than that, and that GeForce 4 was the fastest card you could get for Apple, from Apple, for G4 towers, obviously it never worked in uh, the G4 cubes, and just, I just threw it in there just for the sake of it, the X800 XT, the fastest card you could put in a power mat G4, again won't work in the G4 cube, but in the towers, that bench is around 15, 15,000, so this is an impressive little card. But what this doesn't take into account is the really rather crap 64-bit bus that this card is built upon, and it's also in a 2x AGP slot, which is very, very crippling when it comes to actual real-world performance. So. To test real world, real world performance, we're going to run a couple of games and see how they run. So this is Doom 3 then, um, and you may be thinking, hmm, that's not too bad when I'm sort of up against a wall. Turn around and the frame rate just dies. It's okay when you're in like small rooms and stuff, but big open spaces, it, it just doesn't work. So yeah, this is this is running at all low settings and at about 1280 by something I can't figure it out because of the weird aspect ratio but it runs at about well anywhere between 10 and 30 FPS I, I wouldn't want to play it at all at, at that frame rate honestly so um yeah you, you, you're beginning to see now you get these awesome benchmark scores but due to the limitations of the cube itself the actual real-world performance isn't that great so this is Delta Force Black something, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but um, it's, it's, it's pretty much a similar sort of affair. We get a li little bit better frame rate, but it's not as not as pretty. But again, I mean, it's, it's hardly playable between 10 and 15 FPS, really. Um, yeah, th th there's not much I can say, really. Um, sort of high-end demanding games that were developed for PowerPC, they're not going to run on, the on these cubes. Um, the 2x AGP slot is, is, is it just cripples anything that you put in it basically. This is a slightly less uh, demanding game, um, World of Goo. Now games like this, the less demanding ones, obviously this is this is at full 2560 by 1080 as well, which is just crazy when I think about it. Um, games like this run absolutely perfectly. This is a smooth, well, looks like 60 FPS to me. 
runs absolutely perfectly fine. So yeah, you're not going to be gaming on your cube anytime soon, but for, for less demanding stuff like these little puzzle games, it, it won't break a sweat, especially with this uh, 6200 installed. So that was a clear-cut proof that benchmarks don't mean everything. Um, in terms of like normal UI snappiness and stuff, the core image support alone makes makes the card worth it. Like all all of the the animations are totally buttery smooth. Um, it, it's just the high-end sort of 3D stuff where where that limitation of the cube itself is not the card's fault necessarily. Um, that's where it sort of reach it reaches the limit. So yeah, I can't. <laughs> can't recommend high-end heavy gaming on, on a G4 Cube. On to something a little bit more realistic then, um, video. Now I've got two videos, um, 480p, so standard definition, high-end standard definition, you could, you, could, you could run 360p if you wanted to, um, and then I've got 720p video there, 16x9 video, um, and we're just going to test both of them in VLC. Forget about QuickTime Player guys, it's useless by today's standards. Um, it's VLC or bust basically. So that is the 480p video uh, playing in VLC. As you can see, it, you can well, you can see the, the activity bar at the top. It's pegging it around 100%. Um, it's pretty much at the limit of what it can do, surprisingly really. Um, I've known PowerPC Max in the past to play 720p video fine. But um, yeah, 480p plays it fine without a hitch, without even like the slightest of a hiccup. But um, the CPU is sweating a little bit. This is the uh, 720p video, making the CPU sweat even more. Um, yeah, 720p video, forget about it. Um, it's just not happening. Uh, it's really, really trying, but it's, it's not even a slideshow, it's just like one frame every two minutes. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, 480p is pretty much the maximum uh, I can go on this cube. So now we're going to do um, a little bit of web browsing and given the absolute smashing that this machine has had today, synthetic benchmarks one after another after another, games, 720p video, um, this web browsing should, it should cope a little bit better here. So bang, WebKit came right up, apple.com loads, relatively fine, not an issue. Um, if I search for the PowerPC hub. There we go, Google. And luckily these days now, um, Google sort of recognizes it that it's an older machine, so it loads like an older version of Google. Um, back a couple of years ago, when Google just started to get bloated with Google Plus stuff, it didn't have that, that feature, so Google was so slow to use on PowerPC machines. Now it's a little bit better. Um, so yeah, you can see there it loaded up absolutely brilliantly. Um, if we load the PowerPC Hub website straight away, it, it, it's it's nice and nippy. It's, it's uh, web browsing is really fine, and I think uh, what made the cube struggle a little bit um, more than it perhaps would have normally is the fact it is running 2.7 million pixels. That's why it struggled on 720, uh, 720p video and the games and stuff because it has to it has to drive these pixels and. Um, so yeah, if you were using like a, a 1366 by 768 monitor or whatever, I presume it would have done a lot better. But you can see here, web browsing isn't too bad at all. So the last test um, I want to do on this system is audio, or the pro speakers. Now these cubes came with, came with I, I believe they were 10 watt um, Harman Kardon pro speakers. And they are awesome, guys. They are absolutely awesome. They plug into USB, no external power or anything, and they are awesome. So I've got my main machine on over there, and I've got my Logitech LS21 surround sound with a subwoofer, all plugged into the mains and stuff. And we're going to play the same part of the same song here, and we're just sort of going to see how the two audio setups compare. I think you'll be very, very surprised.
So yeah, um, you probably you probably could tell the difference. To be honest, um, the first one was obviously the the Logitech surround sound. The second one was a cube, but still massively impressive. And, and the the foam is starting to go, so you probably probably picked up a couple of little cracks there, but it's still massively impressive for two puny little speakers that just run off USB. It's just I, I think they're really really cool, and um, they're designed really really nicely as well. So they look absolutely awesome um, on the setup. So yeah. Conclusion time then, basically. Was this worth it? Um, yeah, I'd say it was. Um, I could sell it and I'd probably make two, three hundred pound profit actually. I got all of my parts for very, very good prices. It cost me a lot of money, but I could probably make a profit. It's nice to have a PowerPC machine around, especially a PowerPC machine as awesome as that one. Now that I'm not using PowerPC as my main sort of architecture, it's also it's always nice to have a PowerPC Mac there just just in case, just in case you want to have a fiddle around one day. Does this thing have any functions for me personally? Well, I'm thinking possibly to stick maybe a 500 gig um, ID hard drive in there, so pretty much the maximum capacity it could take, and um, basically use it as like a file server because they are so ridiculously quiet. It's on, and I don't know it's on. Even with the two fans in the system, it is so ridiculously quiet. It runs very, very cool. This GPU has taken an absolute beating today. It's currently sat at 56 and it's going down. So it's a very, very cool system. File sharing and stuff still works with um, Yosemite, so it's worth a shot. Um, and it also it allows me to make PowerPC videos in the future if, if I, I want to, um, which I do. So. Yeah, it's going to act as a bridge machine. It was well worth it because even as a piece of art, as a piece of design, they are just sat on your sat on your desk. They just look awesome, absolutely awesome. So um, yeah, that's the end of it, guys. The FF Class G4 Cube series is um, done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.